Hi there, my name is Jamie Thompson. I'm going to take you through uh, a feature that I've build, been building in the SSIS reporting pack called the Restart Framework. I've downloaded the installer for the SSIS reporting pack from CodePlex. Let's double click on this to install it. Accept the license. Uh, there are three features here. Reports and DAC pack you will have seen before if you've ever used this installer. However, Restart Framework is new here. So the restart framework is a bunch of packages, uh, tables, store procedures and functions which work together to enable restartability of an SSIS project. All the actual tables and store procedures and functions actually exist in our DAC pack and hence if we're going to use the restart framework we do actually need to install this DAC pack as well. We don't need the reports uh, for, the, for this demonstration but I'll install them anyway. That's installed. Uh, we installed it to a folder called SIS Reporting Pack on the D drive. So what we're going to do, is, let's take a look at what we've actually got in here. So in our Restart Framework folder we have an IS Pack file. This is an Integration Services Project file which contains some packages uh, that are used by the Restart Framework and also some demonstration packages as well. We also have a SQL script which will populate some data into the table for us, into the database for us, pardon me, that will help us to set up the restart framework. But before we do that, we actually need to create the, the database. And to do that, we need to install this DAC pack here. So if I copy this location, I'll open up a command prompt. And we'll go to the D drive. We will move to that directory. There we go. And we'll just clear everything up. In preparation for installing this. Now, the way we install a DAC pack is to use um, a utility called SQL package.exe. Now, the command line is fairly complicated, so I have prepared it in advance. I copy from here and paste. All this basically does is take this DAC pack file and install it onto our local instance of SQL Server 2012, thus creating our new SSIS reporting pack database. So this is installing now. It'll take a few seconds. Creating our SSIS reporting pack database and all the objects within it. And the database has been published successfully. If we take a look in Management Studio, we'll refresh our list of databases, we will see that we have a database called SSIS Reporting Pack. Now within here we have some tables which are used by the Restart Framework. Now if we look under Programmability we have some store procedures as well. And these all uh, collectively make up the Restart Framework. Okay. Let's collapse that down. Let's take a look in this restart framework folder. So we have two files. Uh, here we have our project file. I want to take a look at the packages which are actually in here. So to do that, I will copy the path of that file and hop over to Visual Studio, start a new project, and we'll use the integration services import project wizard, which creates as a new project. I'll call this um, restart framework demo. It really doesn't matter what we call that. Click OK, and here we're launched into a wizard which allows me to specify that IS pack file that I just copied the location of. Click next, and then click import, and close. And you'll notice here we have five packages. First two I want to look at are root.dtsx and threadcontroller.dtsx. So these two packages are part of the restart framework. The package that you will always execute if you if you want to use the restart framework is root.dtsx. And what this does is takes a parameter which is defined up here called etl job name. So we, when this package is executed, a value needs to be supplied for etl job name. And what that will do, that's essentially an index into a table within the Restart Framework database. And it will go in there and interrogate the database and determine what work 
this package is actually now going to actually go, go and do. So we'll do that by um, using these execute SQL tasks here. And what it will basically do, basically do is find out which packages it now needs to go and execute. And you'll notice we have eight execute package tasks here. Essentially, these operate as eight. Think of them as eight different threads. So threads of execution which are running concurrently. So we can have up to eight concurrent threads running at any one time. And what these packages do is actually go and call our thread controller.dtsx. What this does is do a little bit of work to prepare the restart framework for actually executing a package. So it's actually going to do some work. And this execute package task will actually go and execute one of those packages. And in our case, it's going to, going to be one of these three packages here, which we're going to use for demonstration purposes. I'll open up load. Uh, we have uh, so the three of them: load product dimension, load customer dimension, and load sales fact. It's a very simple demonstration uh, where we have three packages. In actual fact, if I look at load sales fact, this one literally doesn't do anything. It is purely here for demonstration purposes because we need a package that actually has to get executed. If I uh, look at zoom, which I can't see, if I'm looking. Zoom in here. Okay, so as it says, this package doesn't actually do anything. It simply exists to demonstrate the restart framework. Low customer dimension is exactly the same. Uh, low product dimension is where we actually do some work. So I think I should be able to zoom in here. Where's my zoom? Never mind. I said I can't see for looking, but there we go. We have an execute um, a script task here, which actually raises an error. That's literally all it does. Um, so, to demonstrate the restart framework, what we actually do is we need a package to fail, um, and that's what this uh, this script task will actually cause this package to fail. However, we don't want to fail it every single time this package executes. So we have an expression here, which looks at the second component returned by get date takes a modulus, uh, modulo 2 of that value, and compares it to see if that equals 0. And what that basically does is, um, this is an expression that 50% of the time will, it, will evaluate to true, and 50% of the time will evaluate to false, meaning that this will execute half of the time. Um, so this should be enough to demonstrate uh, the restartability aspect of the restart framework. Okay. So, uh, we uh, need to deploy this uh, this project into our integration services catalog. So let's double click on it. Go to our local server. Let's create a folder. And we'll call it Start Framework Demo. And let's deploy that. We look back in Management Studio and look at our integration services catalogs and refresh. You see, we now have a folder with our project in it, and it contains those five packages that we saw beforehand. Okay, so we're almost ready to execute. However, one thing we need to do is set up some metadata that the restart framework needs to actually do its work. And this script will actually do that for us. What it does is call some stored procedures within the restart framework. So, put etl job is actually used to create um, an etl job within the framework. An etl job is just a definition of a group of packages that need to be executed. We also populate a table called the etl job stage using a stored procedure called put etl job stage. We call that three times. We call it uh, once for each of those three packages that we actually want to go and execute. And you'll see. That I'm naming those three packages up here in my ETL job stage name one, name two, name three, and I'm using those in each of these three calls to put the ETL job stage. If I execute this. So I'm returning some information out, and you'll see that the definition of my ETL job name has these three packages within it, and uh, they're all enabled by default. 
we've got this thing called ETL job stage order. What this means, this tells a restart framework which order um, all these packages need to be executed in. In this case, load customer dimension and load product dimension both have the same number for ETL job stage order. And that means there's no dependency between these things and they can execute at the same time. However, load sales factor has got a value of 20. And what that means is it ha this package cannot be executed until all the packages with a lower ETL job stage order, i.e. these two, have actually completed successfully. So that's how we define dependencies within our restart framework. Okay, we're almost ready to execute. Let's go and do that. So I mentioned earlier that the way we execute anything using the restart framework is um, through this root.dcsx. So let's right click and execute this thing. And one of the required parameters is our ETL job name, which in our case is this my ETL job here, which we set up when we run this script. So I'll paste that value in. There we go. I could click OK to execute this package, but I won't do that. I'll click this script button. It gives me a script which will actually do the same thing for me. If I execute that. OK, so we have now fired off our root.dtsx package. It's executed with an execution ID of 287. Let's see if we can get some information about that. We'll look at our all executions report. So we have ID 287 is currently running. As you can see here, if we look at all the messages for this. Now, now, as it happens, it's actually errored. You can see that we have an on error uh, event here, and the error that was raised is simply raise error, because that was the, uh, the name of that, the task, which actually raised that error for us. So it's a fairly nondescript thing to happen, but all we need to know is that an error has actually occurred. We're simulating an error in this case. Okay, so that's fine. So what that's, what's that actually done for us in um, the restart framework? We'll bring up a new query. Let's take a look at... We'll actually take a look at this query here. So the name of our job is my ETL job. And what we can see, if we draw your attention to this ETL job stage is complete column. We can see that load customer dimension is completed, however our load product dimension is not. And therefore our load sales fact never actually executed. Because as we explained earlier on, load sales fact cannot execute until these two guys have executed as well. And our case load product dimension did not execute successfully. We can also take a look at um, a table called ETL job history. But when we executed this thing, what it did for us was put a record into this table. It gives it an ETL job history ID, and this is um, an ID which will, um, which can be used across the lifetime of this uh, this execution. But it will be maintained over future executions as well because we're actually going to restart from the point of failure. And in that case, we don't get a new record in here. The restart framework will use this same ID to refer to that restarted ETL job. We have the time that it actually executed, uh, as it started. We don't have an end time because our ETL job has not actually ended at this point. We know the execution ID that it was started by, but we don't know that's the end of ended yet, so we don't have the execution ID to end this. And it, at this point in time, our restart tally is zero, meaning this thing has not been ever been restarted. But if we go back to that same script that kicked it off before, we'll execute that again. So in this case, 288 is our new execution ID. Let's take a look here. So we see in our ETL job history table, our restart tally has gone up to one. So this job has been restarted. And we want to see if, um, in this case, actually execute successfully or not. 
So let's go and look at that same um, report again. Okay, so our 288 failed again. It should have failed with the same problem. So as you, we explained earlier on, 50% of the time I'm expecting this thing to fail. So I was hoping on that occasion it wouldn't, but it's failed with the same thing again, but that's okay. If we execute this enough times, I'm convinced that it will succeed eventually. And let's go back to our script, which fires off the uh, the package. We'll execute that again. Our restart tally is now at 2. And let's hope that this thing succeeds this time. So we see that it's running in this case. We'll keep refreshing. It failed again. Let's try that again. We're up to an execution ID of 290. Let's refresh our list of executions. 290 is currently executing, not running. And the law of averages says that this has to succeed this time, surely. It's still running. Still running. We'll keep refreshing. It's still running. Okay, finally. So our package is now success successfully completed. Let's hop back to that query we were looking at before. So in this case, our job got executed three times, but now we have our ETR job history end time. And uh, we have the execution ID in which the job actually completed, which in our case was 290. If we look at our ETR job stages, we will see that our job stages complete has been reset to zero, meaning that we're now ready to kick this job off again. So everything is completed successfully, we got to the end of the job and we can now kick it off again. Okay, that in a nutshell is what the restart framework does for us, it enables restartability of uh, failed ETL jobs and it will restart from the point of failure and it will skip over all the, um, all the steps, all the stages that is actually already executed. I hope that's useful, if you've got any questions do find me um, through Coplex or through my blog, anything like that, I'm pretty easy to find, uh, and let me know if this is useful to you or not. Thank you very much.